Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning. Welcome you all to this uh, lecture in this course on analytical spectroscopy and microscopy applications of inorganic compounds and nanomaterials. Uh, we have seen a large number of spectroscopy techniques by now and uh, very recently just before these lectures we have looked at uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. Now we will look at another spectroscopy which is a very specialized spectroscopy technique and most popularly used for the iron compounds, iron based compounds though it can be used for a few other, but the popularity has come for this because of various parameters which I will explain as we keep moving across this particular topic on this. So, uh, in the Mossbauer spectroscopy is also known as nuclear gamma ray spectroscopy. So, because this is a nuclear transitions that you are looking at, it is also known for physicists as recoilless nuclear resonance absorption of gamma ray spectroscopy. Mostly physicists, a specialized physicist will use the term, but otherwise we use the term, chemists will use the term called uh, Mossbauer spectroscopy and the physicists use the term as the recoilless resonance absorption a gamma ray spectroscopy. This is basically is a gamma ray brings the nuclear transitions that is what happened. Okay, so what is this Mossbauer? The Mossbauer word itself is from the name. So, the name of a person. So, it is the Rudolf uh, Mossbauer who was basically a PhD student at the time when he invented this uh, during uh, early 60s, late 50s, 1958. So, he has identified that you can bring an absorption and emission of a gamma ray or a nuclear transition without much recoil effect. So, it is basically referred as the recoil free. Okay. So, that means the whatever the spectroscopy that we are talking about, it is a gamma ray spectroscopy or nuclear transition spectroscopy. This nuclear transition uh, or nuclear gamma ray spectroscopy is very sensitive to the electron densities that are present neighboring. Also sensitive to other parameters we will study as we keep moving, something like symmetry, coordination, many other something like uh, oxidation state etc. So, therefore, this becomes a very important technique for identifying the not only the quantification, but also the structural aspects of it. So, even a small changes that occur at the vicinity of this particular Mossbauer nuclei, uh, you will see the difference in some parameters that we are going to measure and those parameters measurement will give us a guideline about the electronic structure thereby structure aspects. Just to see in one shot, uh, please have a look at this particular slide please. So, how is this uh, done in terms of the measurement? Then you have uh, something uh, they call the Mossbauer uh, source. So, uh, what you require? Basically, you can, uh, you can talk in terms of uh, three aspects or three major components of the instrumentation. So, if you wanted to study the effect of uh, this chemical environment using the Mossbauer spectroscopy, you require a source. So, that means a gamma ray source, Mossbauer uh, source. And of course, your sample is absorber and the source will emit the radiation and the radiation has to be captured. So, therefore, all non-parallel can be eliminated that is the collimator. Okay? So, you can use that and of course, your sample has to be there and then whatever comes out that you measure. So, that is called the detector. Okay? So, primarily there is a thing. So, as I said that it is very sensitive to the uh, electronic effect and some symmetric effect or some binding oxidation state. Those small variations that comes in this gamma ray spectroscopy in terms of gamma ray energy has to be adjusted 
from the source. So that is why the source is put on a drive. The drive will take the source towards or away. So that's where you can see this double-sided arrow. You can move the source towards the towards the sample away from the sample in order to match the resonance between the source which is emitting and the sample which is absorbing. So I'll repeat that the source is an emitter and the sample is absorber. How that principle will come in a while uh, in the next slide or so. Okay. So now are you clear? One is that a recoil less is possible under certain kind of a circumstances, particularly in solids. Even then, there will be slight variation in the absorption frequency versus the emission frequency. So the emission, whatever comes out, will be slightly less than the gap, and the absorption you require slightly greater than the gap, and that's what to adjust when the emitter and absorber uh, electron density in the vicinity of the, the MOSFET nuclei differs. Then this frequency will differ, or this energy level is modified to a smaller extent. Okay, that smaller extent can be adjusted by this particular driving the source towards or driving the source away from it and this is referred as Doppler effect. I will be explaining that detail in a while. Okay, so, so you have a, a source which is put on a drive and a trolley that can be moved towards and away from it. What speed etc. we will see in a while and then focusing the, the gamma radiation means non-parallel thing eliminating and taking to the sample obviously sample is the absorber and then finally you have your detector. And you can see that if you might have uh, known from the uh, news media etc. there is one of the miniature type of mass bar spectrometer uh, the name MIMOS2 it was sent to the Mars exploration uh, rover uh, in the two rovers of the NASA that they have used this. for. Because you can see, I will be showing some example towards the end of this particular topic and how uh, such a kind of samples in the, uh, in the Mars, other planets can be, uh, can be analyzed and can be identified for the elements that are present, structural motifs that are present, minerals that are present, etc. Particularly those connected with the iron and few other things. Now, so I, I mentioned that the absorber and the, the source. The, the nuclei, they may have a different kind of a electron uh, density surrounding them, different kind of a symmetry surrounding them. So then what kind of a parameters are influenced? So one of the parameters is called the isomer shift, which I will explain, just hold on your breath in a, in a slide or two later. And this will talk about what kind of a variation has come with respect to the source to the absorber in terms of the electronic effect that is there on the Mosboy nuclei by the neighboring atoms, neighboring molecules, neighboring ions in the lattice or in the solid etc. That is one thing. Second is the with respect to the neighbor the Mosboy nuclei you have an electric field in your compound, in your solid, in your whatever the uh, system that you have taken. That electric field gradient will also cause on the nucleus is basically a quadrupolar, particularly when your nuclear magnetic moment is greater than half. So when you have a greater than half the I nuclei, this also is important. The second, third thing is when you have a compound, when you have a Mosby nuclei, in this compound there could be internal magnetic field that can also affect or you can put the whole compound in an external magnetic field that can also affect your lines and that is called the magnetic zeman. So using the three parameters, so that there are three parameters I talked to you and I have not explained you details, but I just mentioned to you. So one is the, the isomer shift uh, is that one and the quadrupole splitting uh, and we will look at uh, these. Uh, uh, quantitative parameters also in a while. Then is the magnetic zeman, or you can say magnetic hyperfine. Any of these, okay? And these using these parameters, you're going to establish the structural electronic environment of 
with respect to your mass by nuclei structural things symmetry based oxidation state many things in coordination compounds even the uh, the kind of ligands that you have the electron withdrawing electron releasing all of these can be identified from this so these are the ones which i'll be re explaining all these three parameters in more detail by showing the corresponding information on that so that is how it is the line widths of the gamma ray are very 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 narrow and the therefore the mass by spectroscopy is very sensitive to the techniques in terms of the energy change so what we are talking about when the nuclei the mass by nuclei is surrounded by different kinds of electron densities there will be a small change in your absorption frequency with respect to the emitter or with respect to the source source emitter is one and the same absorber and sample is one and the same therefore that difference is not that much it's much something like uh, the trillion times of the uh, a part of that uh, energy thing so so even such kind of a fine adjustment is required and that first adjustment can be done very easily in this mass spectro mass by spectroscopy of course there are some limitations which i'll explain you as we keep moving across this okay so in a nutshell i have already put to you the mass by spectroscopy uh, it is basically recoil less emission absorption that means emitter frequency should be exactly matching with that of the absorber frequency but will not not because of the recoil problem but because of the electronic environment symmetry environment and oxidation states many other things and that becomes a boon in disguise because you can study all those things okay so what is a recoil how do i understand the recoil so there is one aspect that we need to uh look at so the recoil is you can the, the easiest way that one can understand is that uh, suppose you take a gun and then shoot a bullet so what happens is there will be a, a lash on your side and then you will be pushed back or you put on your shoulder and make and so in order to stop your movement you will hold it so tightly and that is what is basically is the recoil less you are holding it tightly but in case of nuclei the nuclei is ejecting the gamma radiation so just like the a gun ejects the bullet so there will be a lash on the back on the nucleus and this is the one which makes the 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 energy that is come out of that particular transition emitter is less than what is the gap of the energy gap nuclear level energy gaps on the other hand for the absorber also when a, a shoot comes in for example a, a bullet pierces through obviously there will be movement of the object or even a person uh, and so that is where it is again called the re recoil and uh, so therefore the absorber energy will not match with that of the emitter because of this recoil effect now, so what one need one needs to minimize or make it zero as much as possible and that can be done by various ways and that is what we are we are discussing and that various ways will uh, generate a new spectroscopy called the mass by spectroscopy so recoil free uh, you can the emitter you freeze it you hold it tightly that means how you do it you do it in a solid in a solid the emitter is uh, you know fixed and similarly the absorber so emitter and absorber can be put in frozen frozen condition at a low temperature in a solid because where the lattice uh, things etc but still even then when it shoots the gamma ray out there will be some vibrational when it absorbs again some vibrational which are called phonons generally this is taught in the solid state chemistry or in the solid state physics aspect of it and this phonons will be in terms of the discrete packet packets of that thing and and that is what you have to minimize so that is what you try to minimize or make your absor uh, emitter suppose you cannot do anything lower than that you cannot minimize anything better than that so you have to make sure that your resonance frequency the emitter frequency matches with that of the absorber okay how do you do that and that you can do by a method called the doppler effect so you take this gamma ray emitter source towards your sample or take it away from the sample therefore the doppler effect will adjust your frequency and then brings a match with that so 
this brings basically the most by absorption because of the nuclear transitions or nuclear resonance vibrational spectroscopy so i hope you understand what is a recoil and then recoil free or recoil less and these are the terms so that means you are trying to bring down the recoil but even then you cannot so because of the surrounding different so that is what is the boon in disguise where we can we can analyze the materials analyze the structure analyze the surrounding analyze the oxidation state many things can be understood therefore the mos boyer spectroscopy a nuclear transition spectroscopy is a boon for studying the structures besides quantification aspects of it i hope that is clear if so let us let me reiterate the recoil recoil less using this particular slide i draw your attention onto this slide and the left top panel and uh, this is we are talking about the the nuclei corresponding most by nuclei in the excited state when it returns to the ground state okay and that gives the gamma ray and this we can call it as a emitter or source and this is also talked as a sender emitter sender all those kind of things now the absorber side or receiver so is one and the same and will receive this energy and go to the excited state and that's how you study the one so this is assuming that there is no recoil at all so in other words recoil less but that's not what happens in other words what you have to do is when it ejects a gamma ray there will be a movement of this recoil this cross tells you you should minimize make into zero so you will need to make this parameter to as close as the zero but you cannot make that that is why you need the shifting of that or absorber also yes we are putting it in a solid we are putting it at a low temperature still because the emitter frequency in the emitter the mosby nuclei has a different surrounding as compared to the absorber therefore it will not match with the resonance cannot happen and this uh, this uh, the recoil energy is simply can be identified from this particular thing the gamma ray that you is viewing that is important by the mass of that and the velocity square so this whole thing is influences your the recoil and this whole thing has to be minimized so that your movement of the nucleus for the doppler will be less so i hope you understand that and that is the same thing is shown here the excited state returning to the ground state releasing the gamma ray and for the absorption from ground to excited okay and if this can be uh, if this is released you can measure in terms of the fluorescence but this we are not concerned we are only concerned about this resonance absorption so what do you need you need to bring a resonance between the emitter frequency with that of the absorber frequency in the absorber also there will be several different kinds of absorbers with the different surroundings so therefore you, you so as you keep moving closer as moving farer you will be bringing the resonance principle in act in act so therefore you will get the uh, corresponding signal on that i hope that is uh, clear same thing let me tell in another way so that uh, whatever we learn will be much easier yes we are trying to look at these emitter absorber trying to be in the chemical if they are in the exactly same environment and if they are completely arrested in their lattice without any kind of a thing there should be a match but that is not what 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 happens in reality because in sample you may have different kind of a uh, same mosby nuclei in different situations or only one situation which is different from that of the emitter or the source so therefore you need to adjust that one so this is where and this is generally in the range of somewhere much less than the micro electron volt so and such a kind of a micro electron volt can be achieved by making the source to move either towards or away from this okay and that is what is basically is referred as the doppler effect now please look at the slide in the top uh, corner whatever i explained uh, on the previous slide as the recoil energy part of the emitter the recoil energy part of the absorber makes them far away It reduce their recoil energy then you can bring them together so when will you have a resonance so the the emitter and absorber so 
this will have whatever emits here should be accepted by this. So then only you will have. So that is where thing is. So that means the emitter frequency of energy should have a overlap with the absorption frequency of this. You studied this kind of a phenomena in fluorescence, which is called FRET resonance, the fluorescence energy transfer resonance that you have seen. The, the emission spectrum of one, the absorption spectrum of the other, their overlap of that. Uh, similarly, here, if you look at the, the source is the emission spectrum, sample absorption spectrum, source emission spectrum. These two, the greater the overlap, the better the resonance is. So, this is the, you, how will you bring this resonance? This resonance is the important parameter to bring. That is what is happening. So, your emitter is fixed, but emitter's energy can be modified by moving close to the sample or moving away from the sample, close to the sample, away from the sample. So, you, that is where you put on a rail and then you give certain electro motor. So, therefore, it can move to a positive direction towards it, negative direction away from it, both of the things are possible. This is what referred as the Doppler effect. So, using the Doppler effect, you can fulfill getting the mass wire spectra for the that corresponding uh, kind of a nucleus. Okay? So, that is what and generally what you require is this particular kind of a speed for ion 57 and plus or minus 11, maybe 10 to 20 millimeter coming closer, 10 to 20 millimeter going farther away from the rest resting position. Why it moves and why, why it goes away? To bring resonance in your nucleus. If there are several nuclei in your compound, yes, each one of it. Or even in your lattice, there are several surroundings are there, each one will absorb at a different frequency and that can be matched with this. So, with these kinds of a basic information, confident and hopeful that you understood what a mass buyer spectroscopy. This is not the kind of a technique which is generally taught even for some master students because it is a bit unusual kind of a spectroscopy and used very specially for special nuclei like uh, iron, tin, iodine, platinum. These are the four which are very maximum uh, used ones. Though we are going to speak in this particular topic only on the iron case and a few other nuclei also possible that I will tell you in a while. Okay, now that I feel that we ha I have made the sufficient platform for us to stand on the basic principle and that is what we looked at. Now, you may say why are you showing me the periodic table? I am not showing the periodic table, but I am showing the periodic table which has relevance to Mossbauer spectroscopy and we call Mossbauer active elements. So, what we have studied? We need a emitter, we need an absorber. So, emitter frequency, the, if the same nuclei, if these two are, it will be good. Then with a little adjustment, you can bring the absorption. So, you can look at a mass buyer active elements, you can look at mass buyer emitter, whether what kind of energies come. These are the things which are inbuilt in this particular table. So, the, the bluish tinge, these are the ones, the iron, the nickel, the zinc in the among the transition elements in this on the first row then technetium, ruthenium and the silver and yeah, silver is also reasonably well studied. Platinum, silver, of course, iron is the maximum, iodine, tin, these are the ones which are very highly uh, studied. So, Mosbauer spectroscopy and so, you can see that these are the elements active. Gamma ray sources are available for uh, these ones which are put with the red. Okay? Gamma source is important because that is what your source is or that is what your emitter is then your, uh, your absorber should be the similar nuclei, but with the different environments. That is where you get uh, this one. So, the maximum studied as I said that it is the iron. For the iron, what you use is a 57 cobalt is used. So, 57 cobalt undergoes the electron capture. So, I am sure you are aware of the nuclear uh, reactions. Electron capture is the electron from the Bohr shells is being captured by the nucleus. That means, nuclear uh, the positive charge will be reduced by 1. So, nuclear positive charge is exactly equivalent to Z, which is exactly equivalent to atomic number. So, this cobalt 57 will become into this particular one electron is reduced. So, one electron is reduced and becomes the 56. So, the iron, but this 57 is the, the mass value, not the atomic number. 
atomic number is generally written on the right side of that. So, by one electron captured by the nucleus, captured by the nucleus, the number of protons are reduced or compensated to by one and that becomes a ion because the pre element to the cobalt is the iron. So, you can see here the pre element to the cobalt is iron. So, if you reduce one atomic number, that means you end up with the iron, but you end up with an excited state of the iron nucleus. So, excited state in the I half, the I sorry, I pi by 2, the phi by 2 can lose its energy to ground by directly to half or to 3 over 2. That is, we do not need to know these details very much. 90 percent of it will go to 3 by 2. And this 3 by 2 again gives out a gamma ray that you can call as a fluorescence. And from 3 by 2 to half is the gamma ray is coming. That is what your emission energy or emitter frequency or your source frequency. And this is used for the iron samples. Iron samples, they are absorber and this is what the energy is being used. And we will be covering mainly that one. Okay? And this has certain half-life. 270 days of the half life. So, that means the cobalt source that you keep at the mass Meyer spectrometer cannot be there forever and it will be there for only several months or so. Okay? So, that means you have to keep re refreshing your cobalt 57 source on that. Okay, so, I have already talked to you about the, the energy required and the overlap between the emitter and the absorber. The emitter can also be source and Source means emission spectrum, as sample means absorption spectrum, these are the one gamma ray. So, three main things is the resonance line shift from changes in the electron. So, as the electronic environment changes, this resonance uh, energy value will shift. Okay? And that is what is called the isomer shift, which I will be talking to you, uh, in the explaining through examples in the next class basically. Then quadrupolar interaction, as I talked to you about uh, the, the electric field gradient that you have with respect to that nucleus and that is what it is. And the magnetic ones, so the magnetic interactions, it can be intra, within this compound also there can be a magnetic field, there can be external magnetic field. These will also affect your, the nuclear levels, therefore your spectra will look different. So, all of these together will help us in, in understanding the whole, uh, the subject in terms of modify, in terms of analyzing the compounds. Now, let us look at one at a time the isomer shift. So, you are talking about this is the, the source and the absorber. So, absorber need not have the same level as here because its electronic uh, air surrounding is different. So, the, the ground state may be affected, excited state may be affected. If both are affected equal, then it becomes resonance absorption. But otherwise, you have to adjust your source and that is what is the uh, energy and whatever the difference that you have is isomer shift. This part actually from the quadrupole coupling, which I will be explaining in the next slide. So, let us not much worry about on the right side of this, which I have separately in that. So, as the, how do you understand this? This uh, you have uh, the Mosbier nuclei, you have several elements or several ligands or several other species surrounding that. How they influence the S electron density at your Mosbier nuclei? So, the greater the S electron density, the isomer shift is negative. The lesser the S electron density at the Mosbier nuclei will be positive. For example, iron 3 plus is more oxidized, goes to more negative, and iron 2 plus is less oxidized, will go to less negative or positive kind of thing. So, that means you can look at the oxidation state of that. So, this whole thing absorption will give you one signal. These two signals come from the, uh, the quadrupole coupling. As I said, I will talk to you in the next slide and next slide is here and you can see kindly look at the slide again please. You have a half, you have 3 over 2 and you know the 3 over 2 will of course, half also will interact with the electric field, 3 over 2 will interact the electric field, but that interaction will lead to plus half and plus or minus half plus or minus 3 over 2. So, instead of 1 in the transition that you have here, now it became 2 transitions 1 from here, 1 from here. Okay, and that is what you see. And the center of these two is the chemical shift. The difference between these two is quadrupole couple uh, or quadrupole splitting. Okay. So, you can measure both of them and this is what is found whenever you have i is greater than half. So, this is coming from the electric field gradient. So, that is where, 
So, this is who is creating the electric field? The neighboring atoms, the neighboring ions, the neighboring species. The lattice itself is creating the electric field. It is not that you apply some electric field anything. So, that is where. So, this quad pole splitting can be used for determining spin state, site, it also depends on how symmetric is that. Lesser the symmetric, greater the difference is, greater the quad, quadrupole splitting, quadrupole coupling. And how the ligands are arranged, what type of ligands that will reflect in the isomer shift. Now, the third parameter is the magnetic field, the internal or the external. So, the magnetic field will also interact with your ground level, with your excited level and external magnetic field. So, now half will uh, plus or minus half will split into plus half minus half. Plus half minus 3 over 2 will uh, to plus 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2 plus half minus half. Now, if you see the transitions keeping keeping in mind the selection rules that should be the MI level should be 0 or plus 1 or minus 1. If you keep this, then you will get only these 6, not other. So, these 6 is giving the 6 lines. So, now you combine 3 parameters that you have start, uh, read shown earlier. Uh, so, that you have studied the, all these things. So, one is isomer shift, the so quadrupolar coupling, splitting, and the magnetic Zeeman effect. Okay? So, magnetic effect. Keeping these three together, you can analyze. You have a mineral, you have a mixture of compounds, etc. You can identify how much of each of those are there. All these can be understood. Okay. So, I will uh, take on this principle in terms of applications in from the next uh, couple of classes and I will explain you more to understand the principle. This is a very new technique. So, you need to focus a bit more than in the normal techniques. Thank you very much.